Okay. All right, so the question is, the velocity V of a particle depends upon the time T according to the equation. And um, this is the equation that we've been given. Determine the dimensions and corresponding units of A, B, C, and D and state the physical quantities they represent. So we've been given to say V is equal to the square root of A and B and plus B, T, and plus C over D plus T. So like I said, we equate each of these terms to V. Yeah, so we have V is equal to the root of A, B. And the reason why we're doing that, it means for you to add anything, if let's say for instance, I have, um, if I have uh, Y this side, and then I say this is equal to, or let me give an example of a force. If you have a force this side, and then I say I'm adding 200 and 300. It means that the 300 and the 200 I'm adding, they're all supposed to have the same units, one, and then two, they're, they're all supposed to be forces. Now for, for two things to be added, it means that they are like terms. So what this means is that even this side, if we have the velocity this side, it means that this one is also velocity, this one is also velocity, even this one. So we're going to have V being equal to the root of AB. So we can leave it like that. Then we also equate V to what? To A, uh, sorry, to B, T. So uh, having equated that, or oh, we also have to equate the last one, V is equal to C over D plus um, T. So after equating, we now have to start simplifying. So I'm going to start with this one because it's the simplest one. This one, we, we, we have A and B, which are unknown. So we can't start with this one with two unknowns. This one, we have D and C, which are unknown. So we can't start with it also because we have two unknowns. We start with one, uh, with only one unknown, which is B. So um, I have V is equal to B, T. So the dimensions for V, we know that velocity is measured in meters per second. So meters per second, that's the, the, these are the units for velocity, which in dimension analysis, the dimensions can be written as, uh, the, the meters there represents the length, and then uh, per what? Per time, which is T. So we're going to have L, T to the power negative one. Yeah, so this is what we have. So I'm going to put my L, T to the power negative one this side, and then, I'll also equate this to B. And then this T here, I'm going to write the, the dimensions for time, which is T. And what I'll do here to find B is that I'm going to divide by T on both sides. So I'm going to have LT negative one, like that, divide by T. So now, when you do the division there, this is just the same as having L T to the power negative one, being multiplied by t when t goes up when you have one over a if you want to write it as a base of a you just write a to the power negative one this is what i'm going to do here so this t can also be written as t to the power negative one and this is what we have so when you multiply these two you're going to get the dimensions for b as l t to the power negative two. Since you are multiplying the, uh, the two indices with the same base, you add the powers. So you're going to have negative two there. So these are the dimensions for B. So let's move on to the dimensions for, yeah, we can now find the dimensions for A and um, the dimensions for C and D. So let's find the dimensions for um, V, uh, I mean for, uh, for A there. So we have V, V, this side we have V, so I'm going to write the dimensions for V. Then on the other side, we know the dimensions for B, which are this. So I'm going to write, okay, before I even do the dimensions, let me first simplify this. Yeah, so I'm, I'll first simplify. So I'll first simplify that. So I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to have V is equal to A times B. So 
oh, the square root of a times b, which can also be written as v is equal to a b to the power what? To the power half. So we can simplify this further. We can say to get rid of this half, we're going to raise both sides by two so that we have so that we have v squared this side being equal to a b. Yeah, so we're trying to find the dimensions for what? For a. So the dimensions for a are therefore going to be um, uh, a is going to be equal to v squared over b. We already have the dimensions for b there. So the dimensions for a will therefore be. So while there is v there, I'm going to put the dimensions for v, which are uh, l t negative one. So squared, and then everything, uh, we divide everything by the dimensions for uh, b, which is l t to the power negative two. So when you do the division there, you agree with me that you are going to have, um, so you're going to have L squared T to the power negative two, everything over L T to the power negative two. So this and that can cancel. Then L into L squared, are going to have L. So the dimensions for A are simply just L. So the dimensions for A is L and the physical quantity it represents is what? Is the length. So this one is the length. And then this one, the dimensions for B are LT to the power negative two. And the physical quantities that it represents is, um, uh, the was is, it represents is acceleration because L represents the meters and then T to the power negative two represents per uh, uh, second squared. So the, the units of measurements of meters per second squared represent what? Acceleration. So the physical quantity B represents is acceleration. A represents the length. So let's quickly look at the other. So let's, oh, sorry. So let's quickly look at the other part, which is this one, which is remaining. So we have C and D in that part. So let's see how we can find C and D. So Natasha, you've joined us a bit late, uh, but the session is recorded, so don't worry. I'm going to send the recording to the group and uh, you'll be able to access what you have missed. Okay, so we have V is equal to this. Part of this side. So when you cross multiply here, you're going to have V multiplying uh, D plus T being equal to C. And then from there, what you, do, what you just have to do here is to simplify this side. So V times D, you're getting VD. V times T, you're getting VT. And then we say this is equal to C. So we do the same thing. So if we have C this side and we have independent terms this side, we know that C is going to be equal to VD and the same C will be equal to what? VT, I've just said this C is equal to that. This C is also equal to that. So we can now find the dimensions for, um, for C and D. So here we have two unknowns, which are D and C. Here we only have one unknown, which is C. So we start with the one that has one unknown. So the dimensions for C are the ones that we're looking for. So the dimensions for V, velocity is measured in meters per second, and hence the dimensions will be what? L per T. So this is just the same as L T to the power negative one. So we write the dimensions for L T to, uh, for velocity there. And then the dimensions for time are simply just t. So when you multiply this, um, the, the, when you are multiplying the, the, the bases with the same base, uh, rather the indices with the same base, you simply just add the powers. So we're going to have L, T, we have negative one there, negative one, and then we add to positive one there. So plus one, the power of T is positive one. So when you add these two, you get a zero. T to the power zero, 
we simply just give you one. One times L, you get L. And hence the dimensions for C are going to be the length, just the length. So L is the dimensions for C. And the physical quantity it represents is um, the length as well. Did we do the right thing on uh, B? Uh, I mean, on L? Because uh, we're having two lengths. Uh, how did we... How did we end up with L instead of LT? Where? Oh, okay. On A. Okay. Yeah, because the T negative one plus the one it canceled out. Eh? Okay. Yes. Okay. I think before we, we, we finish up, I'll get back to A. I just want to see if at all what we get what, what we got on L is correct. Because we're having two lengths, C and A. But for C, it's okay. I just want to revisit A to, to just check. And then we also do the same on uh, finding D. So we already have the dimensions for C. We already have the dimensions for B. So to find D, it means that we're going to divide the dimensions for C over the dimensions for what? For D. Oh, sorry, for, for B. So... D will therefore be the dimensions for C we have found is L. And then the dimensions for V uh, is simply just L T to the power negative, uh, L T to the power negative, um, which one? V negative one. Okay, let me just erase this part. Okay. So the dimensions for D will therefore be this L and that L will cancel and D will therefore be equal to the time. Because uh, we're going to have T, I mean, we're going to have one over the, I mean, T to the power negative one. And when you divide that, this will simply just give you T to the power one, which is just the time. So the, the dimensions for D is simply time and the, the physical quantity it represents is time. Yeah, so I think this one is also correct. I thought the one that we found L was, uh, was D. Yeah, because I saw this on the paper. So I think it, it's also correct. Because V this side, V is LT to the power negative one. And then uh, B, we found B to be acceleration. So acceleration is simply just LT to the power negative two. And um, we are trying to find what? We're trying to find A. And we squared both sides in order to get rid of the square root. So we squared both sides on um, this part and even that, this other part because we know that there's a square root inside there. So after squaring there, the square root went. So, so what we have is L2 and then T to the power negative two being equal to LT negative two and A there. So when we do the division, this and that will cancel, this L will go into L, so A remains L. So it's also correct. All right, so let's, let me end the meeting. You join using the same link in order to, for us to continue to do vectors.